Hello everybody, I'm Black Viper of Death, and this is Tsukihime's bonus episodes, where I'm making different choices, and we're seeing where we it goes from there. Um, so I think I used... I went to go talk with Akiha, but I'm gonna go to Kohaku-san's room and we'll watch some television. I love television. Let's see... Kohaku-san's room is here, isn't it? Knock, knock. I knock on her door. Kohaku-san, are you there? Yes, please hold on for a minute. I can hear her cheerful voice from inside the room. I wait for about three minutes. Kohaku-san opens the door and pokes her head out. Oh, it's you, Shiki-sama. What are you doing here at this time? Um, well... I was wondering if you'd let me watch your TV. Huh? Kohaku-san gives me a bewildered look. Uh, well, there's no TV in this house, is there? I've been living in a normal house up until now, so it's become a daily routine for me to watch TV after dinner. I guess I can't calm down without watching it for something like th or something like that, so... The more I say it, the more I realize I'm doing something stupid. There is something not right about barging into a lady's room demanding her to watch her TV. Look, even Kohaku-san is just standing there looking bewildered. Uh, wait a minute. No, she's not. Ha <laughs> ha I guess you're right. You've been living at the R in the household up until yesterday after all. You must think this mansion be kind of depressing after moving here all of a sudden. Kohaku-san gives a cheerful laugh. Uh, let's see. Have you talked to Akiya-sama and Hisui-chan about this yet? You mean about coming to your room, Koha? Oh. Sorry. Let's see. Have you talked to Akiya-sama and Hisui-chan about this yet? You mean about coming to your room, Kohaku-san? Kohaku-san nods. No, I didn't talk to anybody about it yet. What about it? No, no, it's nothing. It's just that I would have to turn you away if you had already talked to them about it. Smiling while she speaks, Kohaku-san looks up and down the hallway. Luckily for us, there isn't anyone else around. Please hurry up and come in. It'll be troublesome if we're caught. Please, just sit anywhere. I'll go make some tea. Coughing to clear my throat, I take a seat. There are all sorts of little things in Kohaku-san's room. It might be thought of as a bit messy for a girl's room. There aren't really many things you could call cute, and what she does have is a lot of things that don't look very useful. Rather, it has an atmosphere of a room belonging to an orderly, scholarly person. Buried in the miscellaneous objects, I find the TV. On top of the table is the remote. Maybe Kohaku-san has been watching the TV until just now. Thanks for waiting. Tea is fine for you, isn't it, Shiki-sama? Uh, thank you. Please don't mind me too much. Oh no, not at all. I'm sorry I can't do much to treat you. Kohaku-san says so, smiling warmly. So... Oh. So, the TV. What do you watch around this time, Shiki-sama? I don't have any set programs in particular, but the news is a pretty basic one. I like to hear new trends, and I like snob stories. Is that so? You seem like a very laid-back person, so I thought you'd be reading after dinner or something. Haha, <laughs> no, I don't have such refined interests. I don't consider myself laid-back either, but maybe that's the impression I give with my glasses. Ah, you wear glasses, Shiki-sama. Akiya-sama didn't say anything about that at all, so I was quite surprised when I saw you at the door. I see. I haven't met Akia since I started wearing these glasses. Uh, these glasses are just for show. I guess you could say my eyes are bad, 
but I think my vision is better than that of most people. It's not because I studied too much and went nearsighted or anything. Oh, crap. I had an intellectual image, but did I disappoint you? Not at all. I enjoy watching TV more than reading, too. I'm glad that you're an energetic person, just like I thought you were. Uh, yeah, thanks. I'm a little embarrassed. Face directly with Kohaku-san's carefree smile. I can't help but feel a little nervous. Uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. You came to watch the news, didn't you? Kohaku-san switches the TV on. It's already 9 o'clock. The news, as it usually does, reports the day's events with a little exaggeration. Oh dear, looks like there's been another of those serial murders. Kohaku-san says to herself while sitting next to me, sounding not the least bit concerned. I mean, you should probably be concerned. The news is running a special feature on the serial killings. The serial murders, which began in the neighboring town, are now beginning to be concentrated within this town. It's a pretty simple story. Late at night, he attacks young girls indiscriminately, and in the end, he drains their blood. It seems like last night's victim is the ninth one so far. I wonder what the police are doing about it. Who knows? It would seem pretty easy to catch a murderer who comes out at night, but maybe he's really careful so they can't trace him. You could be right. The clues about murders build up as they killed more people. So if they haven't caught him even after nine murders, he must be really careful, carefully prepared for the killings. A careful killer, huh? But aren't these killings spontaneous crimes? It's strange to think of them as being carefully prepared. You're right. Even if there's no evidence left at all, then maybe he's not a random killer at all. I can only think that he's got it all planned out from the start for execution. I see. But then, what would be the point of killing those nine girls? Are they friends of his? Acquaintances? Hmm, probably not. If there were connections like that, then I think the police would have realized it by now. In the end, I suppose it's an incomprehensible case without motive or connections. Kohaku-san says all this without... Says all of this disturbing stuff with a smile. It seems like she's really not worried about this case. These murders are happening right here in this town, Kohaku-san. You're a young girl and all, so aren't you even a little scared? I'll be fine, since the killer only appears late at night. If I don't go out at night, I won't run into him. Kohaku-san really is a clear thinker. It is perhaps a bit of a raw explanation, but I suppose that's how a mere news story should be treated. Sorry for intruding on you. I'll be counting on you again the next time I feel like watching TV. Sure, I'll be waiting. Kohaku-san looks up and down the hallway. I'd like to... Escort you back to your room, but his Sui chan is waiting there, so I'll have to say goodbye here. Okay, good night. I had no idea bedtime at the mansion was at 10. Apparently, there's some kind of unwritten rule here that one is not to be out of their room after 10. It's still so formal here, even with the old man gone. Well, I guess it's only natural. I'm also getting tired from my unfamiliarity with this mansion, so I obediently return to my room. <sighs> when I return to my room, my bed has been made. Did Hisui do it while I was away? I'm glad she did, but it's really more than I deserve. I scratch my cheek. Then... Are you there, Shiki-sama? I can hear Hisui's voice along with a knock at the door. Yeah, I'm here. Come in. Excuse me. 
Good evening. Thanks for making my bed, Hisui. Hisui quietly nods in acceptance. Ugh. Just as I thought, I'm not used to this. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell me? No, nothing from me. But Akiyasama has instructed me to... Oh. Sorry. Is there anything else you want to tell me? No, nothing for me. But Akiyasama has instructed me to answer any questions you may have. I see. There are many things I want to ask, but I'll probably get to know them as I continue to live here. Yeah. What I want to know right now before I sleep is... Is it true that the curfew here is 7? Yes. The main gate is locked at 7, and all the entrances to the mansion are to be locked at 8. It is also a rule that one must try not to go walking around in the mansion after 10. Not even walking around in the mansion? Well, I've got no complaint with that, but isn't that kind of harsh? Aki and I aren't children, so I don't think you have to go that far. Indeed, it is a rule, however, so please abide by it. You are aware of the recent disturbances at night, are you not, Shiki-sama? Yeah, that vampire thing Arahiko was talking about. Well, as long as something like that is happening, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry. Hmm, what else? Oh, do you mind if I ask an off-topic question? Yes, what is it? I'd like to know what kind of work you and Kohaku-san do around here. I am here to serve Shiki-sama's needs, and my sister Kohaku to serve Lady Akiya-sama. In our spare time, we do the maintenance chores around the mansion. Is there anything more you would like to know? Hmm... To serve... So that's what it is, after all. My shoulders suddenly feel heavier. It seemed completely natural to Akio when she said it, but I'm nothing more than a normal high school student. I have no interest in having a girl around my age serving me, at least not for now. By serving me, you mean you're a personal servant? Yes. Please do not hesitate to ask anything of me. Well, I get it. Going by how Akio is talking about you, it doesn't seem like I can dismiss you, so I'll just obediently let you serve me. Is there anything in particular you would like? Uh, nothing in particular, but could you stop calling me Shiki-sama? Be honest, I get chills down my back when I hear it. But Shiki-sama, you are my master. That's what I'm saying I hate. I've been living a normal life up until yesterday. I have no desire to start living a life where a girl my age addresses me with Sama. I see. Hisui's response was less than enthusiastic. Just call me Shiki. In exchange, I'll call you Hisui. Let's do away with the formalities and be more casual with each other. Still expressionless, Hisui lowers her eyebrows as if she's being troubled. But, you are my employer. It's not like I'm hiring you. You're the one doing the things I can't, so you're the great one. I see. Hisui gives another unenthusiastic reply. It looks like I won't be able to talk her into it in just one day. Anyway, that's how it is. Don't be so formal towards me. I'll be grateful if you tell that to your sister Kohaku-san, too. Very well, as you say, Shiki-sama. Expressionless, Isui bows her head. She complete, completely failed to understand. I will be leaving now. Please rest now for tonight. Bowing, Hisui puts her hand on the doorknob. Oh, I forgot to ask something. Uh, hold on for a second. Running towards the door, I put my hand on Hisui's shoulder before she leaves. In an instant, Hisui's arm pushes away my arm with incredible momentum. With a whack, she slaps my hand away and leaps back. Eh? Uh? 
It's so sudden, that's the only thing I can say. Hisui is expressionless, but she glares at me fiercely. Uh, did I just do something wrong? Ah. Uh, I am very sorry. She sounds very nervous. I am not used to being touched. Please forgive me. Hisui's shoulders are faintly trembling. I feel like it did something really terrible. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize without thinking. I don't understand why myself. I just feel sorry for Hisui, and I lower my head. Hisui says nothing. I get the feeling her stare is calm again. You have nothing to apologize for, Shiki-sama. I am the one to blame. No, well, maybe, but I just... I scratch my head. Hisui stares at me, pausing only to blink for a second. Um, what was it you wanted to ask me, Shiki-sama? Oh yeah, that's right. I stopped her because I wanted to ask her something. Oh, I wanted to ask about Akia. Doesn't she go to a boarding school? That was only during middle school, Shiki-sama. From this year onwards, Akia-sama has special permission to attend school from home. Uh? You mean she goes to school from here? Yes, but it is uncommon for her to come home before dusk like today. Akia-sama has practice up until dinner, so she is always home before 7. Practice? Practice what? Today is Thursday, so she would have had violin practice. Eh? Usually, she is able to return before dinner on weekdays, so if you have anything to say to Akiya-sama, please let me san know after dinner. Kasui bows to say goodbye and leaves the room. Violin practice. What on earth is that? I mean... Could it be practicing the violin? Nah, I don't think so. She's not some upper class lady or something, so why should she have to do something as bothersome as... Oh wait, she is an upper class lady. Yes. Come to think of it, my sister Tono Akia is a natural born upper class lady. In my memories, she was always the obedient, ever uneasy sister who'd always follow me around. As a child, Akio was always quiet, never having even the courage to express her own desires. She was a frail girl who would always live in fear of a scolding from her father. Yeah, people really do change after eight years. After eight years, I've become the me I am now. Akia has become the Akia of right now, too. Eight years is a long time. It's half of our lives up until now. I was absent from this mansion during that vital period where a child becomes an adult. I'm sorry, Akia. I think things would have been better if I had been with her during those 80 years. I unconsciously mumble an apology. Left by myself, I lie on my bed. This house from eight years ago. My blood relative from eight years ago. It feels like a little like they belong to someone else. <sighs> I wonder what's going to happen to me now. Grumbling to no one in particular, I fall asleep. Wee doo 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 doo. I hear the wave-like sound of something's voice. Something is howling. It's too sharp and high-pitched to be a stray dog. It echoes in my eardrums. Is it howling at the moon? This doesn't feel right. The beastly howling is beginning to give me a headache. It doesn't stop. Oh. 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 Ah, just shut up already. I wake up. 
I can hear the sound of a dog barking outside the window. The clock indicates it is just past 11. This is more than just a neighborhood nuisance. Damn, I can't sleep like this. The dog's howling comes from somewhere near the mansion's fence. It doesn't seem like I can go back to sleep at this rate. And I'm going to skip this because you've we've already seen this. Yep, we're going to skip this. Uh, I still think greeting both of them is the right way to go here. So I'm going to skip that. Skippy, skippy. Um, was there any point to me being in the classroom the second time? I don't think so, so I'm going to go to the cafeteria this time. I honestly don't remember. I decide to eat in the chaotic, student-filled cafeteria as usual. For some reason, the udon and the soba are better than the meal sets at our school, so naturally I decide to have some udon. Sitting down at the table, I eat my tanuki udon. You're eating tanuki? That's not a real creature. The cafeteria's TV is showing the news. The TV was set up so students can watch the recorded morning news during lunchtime. The news is having a special feature on the serial killings. It's been a whole month since the killing started, but no one yet has any idea who this killer is. He is an un unidentified killer, leaving no trace and acting with no motive. His identity still remains a mystery, even though there has already been eight killings in our little town alone. It's certainly very frightening, says the newscaster. Alright. Well, that was useless. Skip. Um, I did choose the reality. So this time I want to see what happens. I should probably save here, just in case this is like a dead end or something. Uh, that this is just a bad dream. This is just a bad dream. But somehow the stench of blood smells so horribly real. Wrong. Yes. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. But I killed her. Is that fact wrong? I didn't kill her. Is that fact wrong? Yes, I. Tonoshiki wanted to kill that girl. That's what I wanted to do back then. Just that, it was all so muddy inside my head. I didn't put it into words. Wrong. I feel like throwing up from the smell of blood. Ah, The contents of my stomach rise in my throat. Ah, uh, uh. The crimson is soaking into my eyeballs. I feel dizzy. I fall down on my knees into the red sea of blood. Uh, my gastric juices come up. I throw everything back up. My food, my gastric juices, everything while I cry. There is nothing left in my stomach. But my body continues to force me to throw up, as if trying to undo what had occurred and return me to a normal life. Pain. It hurts, like my insides are burning. The tears won't stop, and my body collapses to the floor like a pile of garbage. My knees sink into the red puddles spread all over the floor. Red starts to stain my body. It's so painful and red, it's like I'm dreaming. Uh, uh, I keep crying. The fact that I killed someone is making me sad. No. That's not right. I'm sad because I killed her without reason, like breaking apart a doll. I don't understand why I feel like this, why I killed her without reason. Well, I can't find the reason. It's a lie. It doesn't feel real, 
So this is just one of those dreams I have when I faint. It's a lie. Besides, how can someone cut apart someone like that with just a knife? I read it in a book once. It takes a whole day of strenuous labor to cut someone up, even when using a saw. That's why there's no way I could have possibly done such a thing with a knife with just a knife. These lines never existed in the first place. Everything was just a delusion I had fallen for. It's a lie. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Gastric juice drips over my lips, passing out of my mouth, dripping down my jaw. Mixed with the juices is something red. My throat is probably bleeding because my stomach tries to throw up even when there's nothing left in there. Ow. It hurts. That's why this isn't just a dream, and I'm just lying to myself. It's all lies. Yes, actually, I understand everything. I lusted after her. Just looking at her aroused me. When I cut her apart, it was so thrilling I almost ejaculated. These eyes, too. If I knew these lines could cut things apart, like paper being shredded, I should have understood that even a person could easily be cut apart like I just did to her. I had lived a normal life without even thinking about something like that. If I really am the sort of dangerous person who could easily kill just about anything, then I should have put these eyes put out these eyes or lived a life without seeing anyone. I'm sorry, Sensei. I'm so sorry. Not even such a simple promise was I able to keep. Have I gone insane? I don't know. There isn't even a trace of that impulse left. The thought of holding back never crossed my mind. I didn't even consider trying to stop myself. Kill this girl. It had seemed like the obvious thing to do, and I went through with it. And the answer is simple. I must be insane. I've probably been mad since eight years ago when stuff happened. When I miraculously came back to life from a fatal accident, I can hear the sound of rain coming from somewhere. It's raining. I'm in a daze. My throat hurts when I try to breathe. Ouch. I can speak. Shiki sama. Then I become aware of someone's presence near me. My room. Somehow I'm in my own room. Good morning, Shiki-sama. Uh, Hisui? Yes, how are you feeling? Uh... Hisui asks me an odd question. There's not a single thing wrong with my body, but... Why? Yes, why? Why am I asleep in a place like this? Even though I... I didn't say kill someone. I was about to say it, but I stopped myself. My brain tells me I shouldn't say those words. What am I doing here, Hisui? Do you not remember? Your school called to say you left early. However, you did not come back even after dusk. So when my sister went to look for you, she found you resting in the park. Park? You mean the park near here? Yes, when she found you, you were resting on the park bench. Then you returned to the mansion on your own feet. You've got to be kidding. I don't remember any of that. I do not believe it is such an odd thing that your memory is unstable, Shiki-sama. It is difficult for me to say this, but when my sister brought you back, you were in a daze. I don't remember any of this. But I have no reason to doubt what Hisui says. Yeah, it's already 9 o'clock. I don't remember anything. Yes, 
When you returned to the mansion, you said you wanted to sleep. My sister suggested we call a doctor, but you said it happens all the time. I see. I guess I do collapse from anemia all the time, but... This time it's different. Because I'd killed someone. Huh? What did I look like, Hisui? Huh? My clothing, I mean. Was my uniform... Uh... With the blood... And the... Entrails and... Uh, all the other bloody parts. Uh, how was that? It was stained with blood. Your uniform was dirty, so I am washing it. Washing? You mean those blood-stained clothes? There was certainly mud on it, but nothing like blood. Uh? But it was so... Even though I was on my knees in a sea of blood, and both my arms and legs had been completely soaked red? Have you had a nightmare of some sort, Shiki-sama? You looked like you were having a bad dream until now, and you do not look fine. Yasui stares at my face. A dream? That? A dream? Was it a dream? That feeling. That smell of blood. That hideously beautiful white girl. No, maybe you're right. That's just a bad dream. Whew. I breathe out slowly. That's right. That's gotta be a bad dream. There's no way I would break my childhood promise to Sensei need needlessly, and for no reason. Uh, I'm finally awake. Yes, if you are feeling better, I will go prepare dinner now. Dinner, huh? I know it's just a dream, but the color and smell of blood just still lingers in my mind. No, it's fine. I'm just gonna sleep like this tonight. More importantly, Hisui. Yes, what is it, Shiki-sama? Um, well... It seems like I came back after dusk. Did Akia say anything? Akia-sama was not home yet at the time. She came back about two hours ago and was informed of your condition through my sister. Hisui seems to silently ask, what about it? Oh, it's nothing. I was just wondering if she was disgusted with me for causing her trouble on just the second day after I've come back. It did seem like Akiya-sama was distressed, but I would not she w say she was disgusted. Saying that, Hisui takes a step away from me. Well, I will be leaving now. Please call for me if you need anything. Yeah, thanks. Oh, one more thing I forgot to ask. Yes, what is it, Shiki-sama? It's raining outside. When did it start? Before you came back, Shiki-sama. When my sister found you, you were drenched. I see. I can't even remember that. It seems like it was a pretty serious case of anemia. If that's the case, I shouldn't have pushed myself and should have just rested at school. Good night. I'm really sorry about today. Please express my gratitude to Kohaku-san, too. I understand. Good night. A dream, huh? It's like I don't even know what I felt. But if I can't understand what happened or how I feel about it, how do I know it was a dream? I can hear the sound of the rain outside. My mind still feels a little heavy. I glance down at my chest. The old wound from eight years ago is still distinctly there, like a burn scar. Ah. On top of my desk lies the knife my father left me. That old blade which had cut that white girl into seventeen pieces. That was a dream. Nothing more. I repeat this over and over again, trying to placate myself until I sleep. But when I was a child, I think someone once told me, don't tell lies that can't even fool yourself. And yeah, maybe that was 
towards the path of uh, having something bad happen, or like not the true ending, but I wanted to see what would happen, and I've already played it once the way I would normally play it, so now I'm playing it differently. Um, I suppose... Let's talk about the mansion this time. Oh, that's right. What's happening with our mansion now, Akia? What do you mean? If you're talking about the ownership of the mansion, I am inheriting it. No, not that. The only people in the mansion right now are you, me, Kohaku-san, and Hisui, right? I was wondering what the rooms are being used for and so on. Nothing. As a general rule, all of the rooms except for the ones we are using are locked. Your room is at the back of the second floor of the west wing, and mine is in the east wing. Hisui's room is right before the stairs on the west wing, second floor. And Kohaku's room is just before the west wing, first floor. Father's room is right next to Kohaku's room. That's open for now, too. Incidentally, the sitting room is the first right turn in from the lobby. In Akia's words, it would be something like, right before the lobby on the first floor of the east wing. The gaming room and the guest rooms next to the sitting room are closed, but I will open them if you decide to bring friends here. The archives are... well, there are some bad rumors going around about them, so currently they are off-limits. I see... okay, got it. I get a strange, suspicious feeling about those off-limits archives, but for now they have absolutely nothing to do with me. Skip. Skip. Um... I'll, you know what, I'm going to save right here just to be safe. And this is probably a good place to end it. You know, I kind of like these uh, slightly shorter sessions. Um, so anyways, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the bonus content. And as always, remember to like, subscribe, share, and, leave me, and let me know of any other games you want to see me play. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.